Hello, hello everybody and welcome again to the Chin Up Show. Uh, today it's going to be a good one because I'm going to be interviewing uh, two ladies uh, who are sort of, uh, you know, uh, experts. Uh, I, I know when I use that word, they probably go say, no, pastor, don't say that. Uh, but as far as we are concerned, they are probably the most knowledgeable when it comes to uh, the Chinese culture and uh, how to be a Chinese and a Christian at the same time with different traditions, you know, that Chinese have. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'll be uh, talking to them. Uh, it's uh, Elder Shirley and Pastor Sarah that uh, I will be interviewing uh, after I give you the updates. And so it's going to be quite fun. I'm looking forward to it, actually. Um, so... Uh, Next week is already Chinese New Year week. Uh, a lot of, of you will be traveling. And uh, I wish all of you well and journey mercies as you travel and be with family and friends uh, that you'll be able to have a great time, uh, meaningful and memorable, uh, and also that you will shine the light of Jesus' love to everyone you meet. And I pray that the CNY uh, 2024 uh, will be even more meaningful with that focus in mind. All right, so this is the 13th uh, episode and uh, we are glad uh, to bring you some updates. Uh, some of you could be asking me, why do I spend the first 20, 25 minutes on updates? Well, because uh, we have now about 13, 14 churches or church plants in uh, the Klang Valley or in Selangor, Malaysia. And... Uh, about uh, 50 churches in total or church plants in total around the world. And uh, I can't uh, physically be everywhere uh, every time. And uh, the last year or so, especially after the pandemic, uh, my uh, church partners and leaders have frequently been asking, Pastor, we've not heard from you We've not seen you in action. We've not heard you preach. We don't know where you are. We don't know what you're doing. Uh, we follow you on Instagram, but uh, not all the stories are there. Uh, you know, we miss you. And of course, at that juncture, I always say, I miss you too. Uh, but yeah, with uh, physical limitations, uh, we can't be as uh, together or as tight uh, with uh, the repo and the uh, reports and uh, the uh, relationship as we would like to. So I do my best uh, with this Chin Up show uh, to bring everyone in uh, so that they know what's happening with uh, me and the ministry. And I also touch on uh, what's happening across the board uh, and not just uh, for church on Sunday, uh, but also with our social enterprises and maybe things that are happening with the country um, and all that. So... That's why we do uh, the updates. Uh, we want to kind of bring everybody closer together. And I hope it's working. At least Pastor Lazarus, who follows this, uh, you know, uh, uh, religiously uh, almost every week, uh, he tells me, Pastor, I am listening to your podcast and it's so good just to hear the updates and to hear how you are doing, how your family is doing, how uh, the church family is doing. And so I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, I at least uh, am... Uh, being relevant to at least one of our leaders, uh, Pastor Lazarus. Uh, thank you so much for following us so closely. So uh, I'm sure others also are, are coming in. Some people have, have said to me, uh, Pastor, it's a little bit long, uh, one and a half hours sometimes, the podcast. But I thought I, I, I wanted to do this because of the purpose. The purpose wasn't just to have a 40-minute podcast talking about world events and sounding smart. Uh, that's not the purpose. Uh, the purpose is also not just to get your attention. And so if I do a shorter show, uh, everybody will be able to keep their attention and, and, and watch to the end. It's, it's meant to be uh, relational. It's meant to give you as much as I can. And God is doing so many wonderful things in and through X Church and AYA and uh, our social businesses like Victory Academy. And so I, I don't want to uh, shortchange uh, the people who are listening uh, but to give them all that uh, has been happening uh, the week uh, before and the week that we're in and maybe even the week uh, that's following so that everybody can be updated. Of course, you can watch this podcast in piecemeal. That's why it's podcast, right? You can pause it 
and then uh, come back after lunch <laughs> and watch a little bit more and pause it and, you know, after dinner or with your family, uh, turn it on and watch with your family. Oh, this is where pastor is. This is what's happening to church and uh, so on and so forth, okay? So a little reminder of why we do the updates on the podcast. Uh, let me now, now give you some updates. Uh, I had a really, really good time with uh, XTV. Uh, I call it the XTV Day Out because we took uh, some of the key uh, personnel or the key volunteers of XTV out for uh, like almost a full day of meetings. And uh, we had good meals as, as well, excuse me. Uh, and uh, uh, what we do with some of these day outs and retreats is that when we find that there is a ministry that is a little bit stuck uh, and people are a little bit maybe uh, wondering uh, and maybe frustrated uh, and um, thinking to themselves, you know, where are we going with this, right? And maybe dreams have uh, started to wane and people are not as excited as before. Then uh, we've got to find out why it's stuck. And sometimes it's personal stuff that has gone on, uh, maybe misunderstandings and maybe it's just uh, lack of clarity or vision uh, and all that, right? So we've got to find out. We've got to get down to it. And uh, so we did that. And uh, the people came. And we had a good, uh, at least, well, altogether about four sessions. Uh, the first two was just dealing with what's causing this stuff. What's causing this clog in the drain, as it were? So, you know, no matter how much fresh ideas you put in, like fresh water into a drain, uh, it's, it's just going to get stuck. It's not going to flow. It's not going to get done. And so it was wonderful uh, to see uh, people just open up. And, you know, they said a few times, Pastor, if I can be honest, Pastor, if I can be honest, Pastor, if I can be honest. And I said, yeah, this is exactly the time and space for you to be honest. It's a safe space. And the beautiful thing is, by the time we ended that day out, there was such a beautiful um, uh, dynamic of understanding and a deeper knowledge of who we are, where we are, where we're going. Uh, and uh, everybody was on the same page by the end of the day. Uh, people were like, instead of saying, why? They were saying, why not? Uh, instead of saying, cannot, they say, try. Uh, instead of saying, this was a problem, they said, I'll be the solution. Uh, and I tell you, uh, I love retreats and, and day outs like that because we just want to get down to it, solve the problem. Uh, don't just keep talking about things that cause us uh, stress and, 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 and uh, sadness and, and cause you know, everything to just be so slow. Uh, you know, because pe people have been given to us as a gift from God, talents and volunteers who have got amazing uh, abilities uh, and X Church is really, really blessed. I'm, I must tell you that. So, so blessed. We have the best, really. But sometimes, you know, the, the devil just comes in subtle ways and causes misunderstandings and causes, uh, 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 you know, uh, tiredness and jadedness, not just in body. You know, in body, when we're tired, it's, it's fine. We can take uh, a drink, 100 plus, maybe uh, go to sleep, uh, you know, be restored. But the problem is when people are jaded and tired inside, in their hearts, in their minds, because then 100 plus can't help. <clears throat> and, um, and uh, you know, 12 hours of sleep can't help. Uh, in fact, that can even cause depression <laughs> when you sleep too much, right? You, you come to a place whereby, oh, I'm not sure what's happening. You know, I feel tired, but actually they're tired inside. So uh, as uh, leaders, uh, we uh, are responsible and with God's help, we can do this to, 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 to address these things. And because I know that XTV really is like the best uh, church media I have ever known. Um, and I dream about the past. Well, not dream about the past. I, I think about the past. And, and, and dreams come into my mind uh, of what we had in the past. And uh, we were really cutting edge. And we were really the best at what we did because God gave us people. They came together and they put their best foot forward and um, their best creativity, ideas and all that flowed. It just flowed. And sometimes in the church, in an organization, even in a family, you can start seeing people kind of slow down and we've got to find out why. 
And if it's just a break that they need, some rest, you know, a holiday, then do that because that's probably the quickest, even the least expensive way to do it. Uh, just go, just go have a break, right, and come back refresh. But there are times when it's not just that; it, it, they they need a breakthrough more than just a break. And uh, so I I just take my hats off to uh, the volunteers that were there at the XTV day out because they were willing. Yeah, they were willing. They were honest about where they were and what they thought uh, and how they were upset. And one guy even said, "I was angry actually." Uh, that, you know, something I did uh, for the sake of the church was just, you know, turn away and turn down so easily and uh, I had spent hours and I was tired and I still did my best and and then he felt like, you know, people didn't appreciate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I, I'm glad to have just received all that and with the, with the heart and willingness to just say, yeah, I want to hear you out and I want to get down to the bottom of it and I want to uh, to see how we can... Uh, be the solution, not the problem, and focus in on moving this church forward through XTV. And so I just want, I know I'm, I know I'm spending a couple of minutes because within these minutes also, I'm, I'm trying to say this is leadership. Uh, this is uh, uh, an investment you have to make uh, because God has given us good people, as I said, and sometimes good people uh, just need a, a good time out uh, to just, um, dream again. But before people can dream again, they need to get to a place where they are healed and they are whole and they are healthy in their hearts, in their spirit, in their minds. And the way that day ended when we uh, finished off uh, the day out for XTV, I was just so encouraged by the people's response. So uh, it's going to be happy days and happier days uh, for XTV and also the whole uh, creative um, communications team for X Church is uh, coming together and we have started a new chat group and so we're going to be talking about how uh, to really use the creative gifts and talents that God has given us and to maximize it uh, for the growth of X and beyond. So that's awesome. Um, let me tell you uh, that uh, on one of the Sundays, I uh, was at XPJ and XBU uh, I think some of you know that. And then after that, I I drove uh, over and across the border to Singapore. Let me explain why I think that update is important. Is because uh, one of our pastors in Singapore, Pastor Letitia, we call her Pastor Let for short. She is uh, the children's church pastor for X Singapore. And she is uh, in her 70s. And she is one of the most faithful uh, children, church uh, pastors I have ever known. Uh, even in her 70s, she has not talked about giving up. Uh, and uh, she gives her best every Sunday. And sometimes in ex-Singapore, she could be the only one. And many times she was the only one serving the children. And we are just so, so uh, indebted uh, and so, so proud of her. Um, but recently, uh, she had a health uh, crisis and she came back uh, from a break somewhere, uh, but she uh, passed out uh, on her way out of the airport, I believe, and she hit her head, uh, the back of her head on the floor. Uh, and the next time she uh, awoke, uh, she came to, uh, she found herself in the hospital. And uh, by then, uh, I think she had about three stitches uh, for the cut on the back of her head and she had lost a lot of blood. Uh, I was told even that uh, the hair on the back of her head was matted because the blood had uh, you know, uh, uh, dried up and caused the hair uh, right, uh, to, to dry up with it uh, and, and, and stick together. And so it was so difficult. Uh, Mrs. Ku, uh, who tried to help, you know, said, she said she took a comb and try to comb the mat out. And she said it was so hard to do it. And uh, so uh, Pastor Let went through uh, the, you know, the, all the checkups and uh, the doctors found that she has three blockages uh, in her heart, in her arteries. And two arteries are at 90% blockage uh, and uh, one is at 70%. So uh, 
So uh, even at this moment, I haven't received uh, an update on what her decision is because of her age. Uh, she's, um, you know, obviously and naturally quite concerned about what an open heart surgery uh, will uh, do to her. Uh, so uh, she is uh, under observation and uh, she has enough family and friends to surround her and uh, Mrs. Koo, her very, very good friend, uh, brings her to the hospital and now and then updates me uh, about uh, her, her, her progress, Pastor Let's progress. Uh, so I, I just thought, you know, I, I will uh, go ahead and drive down to uh, Singapore. I really thank God for Jenny Mercies because once or twice I almost fell asleep on the wheel. Uh, and it, it, it's not only been a long day or a long weekend, it's been a long two months for me uh, ever since even taking up a VA, Victory Academy and, and, and uh, doing all that waking up early in the morning, uh, finishing up later at night. And so I knew it was going to be a risk even driving uh, down uh, to Singapore. I tried to fly, but uh, the uh, airfares have gone up double. Uh, maybe because it was last minute that I was booking the ticket. Maybe because, uh, you know, it, it's just, you know, uh, the way it is uh, with airfares now to Singapore. Uh, so I drove. Thank God, uh, King Yak. Elder Kenya and Elder Shirley decided to also come down with me. It was great to have company. And Elder Shirley's uh, grandma uh, has also uh, been having challenges with her health. So Shirley thought, yeah, uh, I'll go with you, uh, Pastor, together with uh, Kenya. And uh, she said, I can also visit my uh, grandmother, which she did and had a great maybe two-hour uh, catch-up with her grandma. Uh, and uh, the only thing is, uh, when I went down to Singapore, um, I couldn't actually meet uh, Pastor Let physically uh, and personally because uh, it was just so fresh, right? This whole incident and her family members just didn't want any uh, visitors from outside to come to their house. She had already checked out from the hospital back to the house and the family said, uh, please, 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 please understand uh, the family is going through a, a, a stress right now and uh, it's, it's tough times and the family, of course, they also have an elderly mom uh, so you can imagine, right, if Pastor Let is already in her 70s, you can imagine how old her mom is. And they're afraid, you know, if uh, her mom catches COVID. Uh, so uh, I understood. I just wanted to show Pastor Let that I love her and that we, the church, love her. And to me, driving down to just say to her that I was ready to see her, to pray for her, uh, was, you know, enough for me. Even though I didn't get to see her, I thought as long as she knew, uh, that I came, as long as she knew that uh, we are praying for her uh, and that, uh, you know, we love her and that we appreciate her so much. And so we brought a gift, a small gift from uh, X Church to her uh, and it wasn't very much. Um, it's, it's just that, you know, in times like this, you need a little bit of money, uh, even if it's not for medical. I thank God that Pastor Lett has got good insurance. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's just the incidentals, you know, the out-of-pocket, Right. Uh, the, the lunch here and there, the, uh, I don't know, taxi fare, whatever. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it could be just different, different costs, right? Uh, that's extra from your normal day-to-day. Uh, -day. So, uh, but you know, it's all just gestures uh, of love and a card that I wrote. And I, and I wrote the card on the spot saying, although it's sad that I can't see you face-to-face -face on this trip, but I understand why. Uh, and I just want you to know that we love you and that you are, you know, the best and we just want to show you our support. And sometimes, you know, in life, it's just about being there. Do you know what I'm try trying to say? Like, for example, if you went to a friend's uh, father's or grandfather's funeral, for example, uh, it's not like we have the best words to say at the funeral. Sometimes we don't even know what to say. Like, oh, I understand what you're going through. You don't, right? Uh, I know your pain. And then you go like, oh, but I don't really. Uh, and uh, uh, it's all going to be okay. Yes and no. And sometimes you go like, oh, do I just, do I say that? Maybe it's not going to be okay. Uh, and um, even the word condolences, right? It's a very big word. And you go like, I wish you condolences or uh, uh, my deepest condolences. Now, it's a very nice uh, term, but it really means not very much because when the person receives your condolences, you go, okay, thank you for your condolences. But what's that, right? Uh, so, uh, most of the time, it's not just words. It's being there. It's the presence. Uh, I think that's 
that's really life. A big part of life is the dad being there for their children, for his children. Mom being there. Dad may not always be perfect dad, but is dad there? Is mom there? Children, you know, are you there for your parents? And sometimes you don't have all the money to give to your mom. You don't have all the whatever it is to offer your dad. Maybe he's, he doesn't need your money, but, you know, just being there. That's why Chinese New Year reunion is really important. Uh, and some people might say, oh, that tradition, ah, that's just old Chinese tradition. No, I, I believe it's a God tradition. It's a good tradition. And, and people should try their best to just be there. Now, I know sometimes because of work and because of uh, the, uh, uh, the inability to be there at a certain time, you know, it doesn't happen every year, right? Uh, as in like you can't make it every year. But sometimes I understand uh, there are days where you can't. If you're a pilot, you have to fly your plane. If you are in the army, you have to be at the border patrol. If you're a policeman, you know, and if you're the person collecting toll at the toll booth, right? If everybody goes on a holiday, uh, the, the toll uh, will not be able to work. Of course, now they're going into a smart tag and RFID and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, things have to go on, you know. Uh, uh, you know, the people that are working at the airport tower, right, when planes are coming, they, they can't, not everybody can go off on a Chinese New Year because if, if, if the tower has nobody there and, ev and everybody goes off uh, for you know, their reunion dinner, then how are the planes going to land? Do you, you understand what I'm, I'm trying to say? There will be times uh, where, where this happens, but it, it doesn't negate the fact that just being there for family. Uh, you might say, I oh, yeah, a waste of time. You know, uh, We're talking about the same old thing. Auntie is going to ask me again where you can get married. You know, Uncle is going to ask me again where you can have your first child. You know, ah, boring, right? Never mind, just be patient, people. Just be patient, you know. Ah, still no girlfriend, ah. Huh? Still no boyfriend. Ah. Relax, relax. That auntie is still going to say like that. That uncle, uncle, auntie, if you're listening to me, please don't, you know, give your young people a hard time, lah, please. That's why they stop coming to reunion. So if you want them to come to your reunion, you know, say some nice things, lah. Don't say, why, you know, so fat. Don't, don't say things like that, lah. It's okay. But once a year, why, 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 why call your nephew fat for, right? Uh, call him fat another time, lah. But you know, for Chinese, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Chinese New Year, don't lah, okay? Uh, so let, let it be a great time for everybody, a memorable time, a meaningful time, okay? So just be there, all right? Right now, we're just being there for Victory Academy students, and I'm just being there also for the teachers. I don't have all the expertise, I don't have all the answers, but I think uh, the biggest answer is to just to be there. And when you're there, you'll hear what you need to hear. And God will give you the words to say what you need to say, you see? And even sometimes if there are no words, they just be silent and give them a hug, you know? Give them a high five, smile. Uh, you, you don't know sometimes the power of a smile and the power of a handshake and a good hug, amen? And a nodding of your head that you, you know, that you agree. Um, so just be there, just be there. So uh, let me say some few things about the school. Before I close, I know I'm taking a little bit more time uh, today, but I feel like different things are coming up that's important for all of us to hear. So uh, maybe I will uh, close this update uh, with things that happened with the school. Uh, yeah, school and maybe just one more thing with Holmes Board. Okay, with the school, uh, we want to welcome back Jonathan He, teacher Jonathan He, who is uh, back uh, and he has returned to Victory Academy after having uh, resigned, uh, I sat with him because I uh, heard from God that I should at least go and talk to two teachers who had resigned and no longer was with uh, Victory Academy. One was teacher Lithi and the other was a teacher or is teacher John He. And both of them uh, also heard from God and it's true that the Lord uh, put them on my heart because they responded according to how God uh, wants them. And uh, the school is very, very blessed to have back uh, teacher Lithi and teacher John. He is wonderful. Uh, is, 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 a, is a boost even to my confidence because when I am rebuilding Victory Academy and uh, in the past, right, people who uh, leave us, good people who leave us, uh, they leave because of certain reasons. Uh, and uh, when they start seeing hope again in the school, when they start seeing that, uh, real changes are being made, uh, then the testament that you are doing something right is when good people come back. <laughs> Seriously, they are probably the ones that know more than you. 
uh, and they know why they shouldn't come back. And they, they probably will come to a place whereby, no, I don't believe. Even though, Pastor Kenneth, you said all these wonderful plans, I don't believe it. I just can't believe it. I have no strength to believe it. So, the return of good teachers actually speaks a lot. It's loaded uh, with good things, meaning to say that one of it is, I believe. I believe what you're saying, Pastor Kenneth, and I can see it. And I have hope that uh, we are in for better days. And I want to be part of it. And I want to give my life to it. And so uh, that's, that's just, as I said, testament uh, to the fact that uh, God is doing good things with Victory Academy. And so I've been having meetings after meetings, management meetings, uh, principal's office meeting. I'm the head of the principal's office and also the management team. And so many good ideas are being uh, rolled out slowly but surely. In fact, some people might even say, Pastor, you're so quick in uh, putting these ideas uh, to implementation. But I still am quite aware that we can't roll everything overnight. So we roll out what we can. We don't wait for perfection. And I want someone here to remember, don't wait for everything to be perfect before you start doing what's right. So even for the parents' lounge, right? Yeah, nothing perfect about putting out a ping pong table and coffee, tea, chairs, right? And having one or two from the management be there, be there, uh, so that when parents come, play ping pong, have a tea, have a coffee, sit down, relax, they have uh, management to talk to if they have grouses, if they have suggestions, if uh, they have ideas. So we want to be there for parents. And when parents are happy, the school will be happier. Uh, and so uh, no perfection to that, just roll it out. All right, roll it out. And already parents are showing um, that they appreciate it. And more and more parents are coming actually uh, a bit earlier because they realize there's a, there's a place whereby they can call their own and have a, a seat uh, with a cup of coffee or a, or a game of ping pong also uh, with the management. So uh, that was good. Uh, we had a really, really good time with parents uh, on uh, Saturday, the 27th of January. It's called Reveal. And you know how you spell Reveal? R-E-V-E-A-L. Uh, so the V and the A in reveal was uh, uh, cap, <laughs> capped. <laughs> uh, so the V and A, but reveal uh, because I was going to reveal to parents all that was happening and all that was to come. And I, it was so good. It was just so good. Just like I enjoyed every moment of the X TV day out and how towards the end it was a running success. Um, the same happened with Reveal. The parents, just one by one, were so glad that they came. They came up to me, firstly thanking me for my honesty because I was just plain honest about recognizing where we were, how we were losing teachers and students and how, uh, you know, we were also losing money and, um, you know, it was a crisis really and uh, the Lord told me, to get in and give leadership. So I'm not the principal. I'm just right now heading the school and heading the principal's office. And I've uh, frozen all the titles because titles are not important right now. We want to work. Huh? We want to kerja. <laughs> we want to work. All right, do the work. Okay? Don't all the egos and emotions put into deep freeze. Okay, there's no time for that. We, we want to focus and be effective. We want to turn hearts around. We want to cause doubters to be believers. And we want to, you know, uh, cause people to hope again and see a future in Victory Academy. And so uh, it was an amazing time. They thanked me for my honesty and they also thanked me for revealing to them uh, and also fighting for the school with all these new ideas that's being rolled out. And in fact, parents that were there saying, what more can we do? How more can we help? And one parent even said, is there a place I can donate? You know, I think it's just a parent's way of saying, I want to be part of this rebuilding process. How cool is that? The parents are fighting back for what is uh, good and what we believe in. Parents, thank you for rising up and fighting for this school. It's worth fighting for. And I say to them, if we go down for some reason, at least we go down fighting. At least we go down fighting. 
So it was really, really good. And I thank God for all the clubs and, you know, the chapel that's really enriching and uh, creatives uh, that's happening. We're going to have a performance day on the 16th of August. Students are excited about, about that. Volunteers are helping. Teachers are being part of this uh, preparation for our students for that day, 16th of August. Uh, and um, it, it's just come alive. Victory Academy has come alive. And uh, I'm just praying now for uh, supernatural favor with the Ministry of Education. And uh, uh, we want to be able to work with the MOE uh, more and more in the days to come and, and just really have a good standing with them. So I'm praying, I'm praying almost every day for an open door and for super, super, supernatural favor with the MOE. Uh, may they see that what we're doing is a good thing and we're helping students and uh, we're, you know, we're not doing, doing anything harmful. Uh, we're not, uh, you know, uh, destructive. We are not uh, trying to be funny. Uh, we're just trying to do our bit and our part uh, to uh, make sure that the heart of education is the education of the heart. All right. So uh, as I close this update, uh, I want to also say that I met up with Ken Singh. Ken Singh is uh, the uh, head of our homes board. But as he met me, he felt like maybe uh, he is coming into a new season uh, and uh, he would like to see himself uh, maybe helping out more in different uh, dream teams that he believes he can uh, achieve more for that dream team. So for example, X-Men Devotion. Uh, for example, um, I think it's security and, and host. So, uh, as I close this segment of um, updates, I want to say that I agreed with Ken Singh that maybe uh, the time has come that he releases uh, being head of uh, Homes Board and uh, proceed uh, to uh, do more for uh, one or two of uh, the uh, dream teams that I believe he can excel in. And because he will excel, the whole dream team will excel. And so we ended uh, that dinner uh, really, really amicably, really good uh, because um, I also caught an idea from the Lord that I shouldn't just find another Ken Singh to head the homes board, but that I should just change the whole structure. And so the Holy Spirit revealed to me that the homes board should come under the board of elders, which I thought was just, whoa, right? Because the board of elders are just uh, people of authority, people are, who are anointed, people who are, are, are able to move things and move leaders and people respect them, people will hear what they say uh, and they will download from the Lord because homes is really an integral part of the church. Uh, it is where uh, the church really grows, both in numbers and uh, I usually say both in quantity and quality. So we must make sure that enough attention is given to homes. And right now, not enough attention is given to homes. And so we want to grow. We want to double up, triple up, right? We want our leaders to be strong, healthy, and well. And so uh, the homes board is now under the elders board or the board of elders. And uh, soon we will also bring all our shepherds under the elders. And I just believe that is a powerful combination. And it is set to explode for the glory of God. So, that's uh, this segment, segment one, and uh, I will come back uh, right after this break. And at the break, you'll be listening to a song written uh, and I think sung by Maggie Lim. It is a Mandarin song uh, and the title in English is Jesus. Please enjoy this song as we break for a few minutes and I'll see you very quickly. Yes, 
要高举你名，荣耀属于你。耶、yeah ，耶稣。你是复活的主，战胜死亡。耶稣，你将生命赐给我，我要扬声唱，无人与你相比，因你至高。你战胜所有，永远掌权的神，国度属于你，荣耀也属于你，你的生命超乎万Everybody, uh, to uh, the uh, second uh, segment of episode thirteen.、Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, we have two guests,、uh, in-house guests,、uh, on Chin Up Show today, and they are Elder Shirley and Pastor Sarah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Good to see both of you. I've known these two ladies for a long time.、Uh, Elder Shirley,、uh, the longest, probably、uh, between the two. Uh, and uh, she uh, has been and still is my PA. She reminds me that she's been my only PA、uh, for 21、uh, years now or more. And uh, then uh, Pastor Sarah,、uh, I've known her for I don't know now, maybe I don't know, is it 15 years or more?、Uh, and、uh, Pastor、20. Sarah, 20? Wow. Okay. So、uh, I think it's 2020, uh, 20, 2000, 2003. Yeah, 2003. I got three. 
that's yeah. that's that's good long 20 years um, <laughs> uh, pastor sarah sent me a photo yesterday uh, showing me uh, the first first generation um, uh, evening uh, first yeah. generation class correct that uh, she had uh, and it was it looked like a room packed with uh, students <laughs> let's call them students uh, who wanted to know more about first generation or what first generation had to say now uh, i'll give you uh, those of you who are not familiar with first generation first generation basically speaks about first generation christians meaning to say that you are the first christian in your family uh, and uh, so you are first generation and of course after that uh, either your children uh, become christian after you or a cousin or brother or sister um, so basically, uh, yeah, it, it's first generation, first, uh, first Christians in the family, especially in the Chinese context, especially not just only Chinese, but especially so in the Chinese context because many of them in our church are Chinese. And Chinese uh, do have a lot of traditions and a lot of practices. And uh, some mm -hmm. of them are all right, like maybe Chinese New Year reunion is all right. It's a good practice, a good tradition. But some of them involve spiritual things uh, that we might not mm. think is spiritual, might not even know that historically it was uh, spiritual. And so we just do it because we, we think it's tradition. Mm. But actually, it affects our faith, either mm. immediately or in the long run. And uh, it could even uh, block our blessing. Uh, and uh, so we wanted to make sure we educate our people, especially first-generation Christians. If, if you were second-generation, then you have no problems because your dad... Uh, was a Christian and so probably your dad already stopped doing some of these things. And then so when you uh, become a Christian after your dad, uh, then your family already, as I said, stopped uh, practicing some of these things because your dad found out that you know it was wrong and he said, okay, uh, I'm going to cut it off uh, and not have my family continue to do this. But if you're first generation, uh, your dad could still be doing it. And not only that, but demand that you do it. Or your mom said, hey, Come on, you know, go worship your ancestors. Go put a joystick there and, you know, stuff like that. And, and, and you go like, oh, okay, mom, sure. And then not realize that it is a spiritual thing and not pleasing to God. So uh, I know even saying these things, and if someone is watching this now and uh, you are from that place, you might really be angry at me saying that, you know, uh, you had not, uh, you know, uh, done something that's pleasing to God. Uh, you might not totally agree. Now, Agree or uh, agree to disagree. Uh, some of you might even watch this and be angry uh, because of some of the things you say. No, we, we're not here to make anybody angry. We're not here to make anybody upset. We're just here to speak of our experience and tell you what happens at first generation. So anyway, last night, just last night, uh, Pastor Sarah and Elder Shirley, both of them had conducted classes uh, for first generation. So even after 10 years, we are still doing it because we see how important it is. So maybe very quickly, just tell me how it went last night, Sarah. Hi, Pastor. Thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity to share. So last time we had uh, our first generation Christian. Uh, I run the English session. Uh, Elder Shirley has uh, also gotten, you know, uh, a Mandarin leader, David Lu, to run the Mandarin session because some of them uh, they are more proficient with Mandarin, so mm. they understand better. Yeah. yeah so for the English class, I, I we have about eleven, mm. uh, eleven participants. Right. You know, and half of them are from the deaf community because they are first generation Christian. Mm. And I think the Mandarin session, I think we have about five of them who joined us last night, and uh, we had very very good session. Uh, we talk about you know uh, food offered to idols, mm. ancestral worship filial piety, mm. uh, what are the challenges, you know, when we are first generation Christians, mm. like, you know, difficult to go to church, especially Chinese New Year is on the second day or first day, mm. <laughs> right? Mm. Um, uh, water baptism or, you know, attending funerals, mm. whether you whether you participate or not. Yeah, right. so those are some of the things that we actually Very covered. Very good. Uh, Shirley, uh, yeah, so uh, tell us uh, how effective this is, uh, this class is even with uh, the Chinese community and those especially who are speaking Mandarin? Uh, hi, Pastor. So basically, it, 
it is very, very effective and it's very relevant because um, it is Chinese New Year and 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 many things, many of them they become and they become Christians and they're not sure what they can do, what they cannot do, and uh, and I remember we specifically uh, intentionally placed the class right before Chinese New Year so that we can prepare the new believers mm. how to how to um, maximize and how to live with their relatives and family members even through this celebrated season. Mm. Because um, I remember there was once uh, someone asked, oh, so can I still um, 去拜年, no? can I still uh, go and do visitation? No? Even that, for me, it's just, yeah, sure, you can. you know. But, but because some of us, we know, some of them, many of them, they don't know. And uh, and they, we, we don't want them to overdo it. And until, um, except when you overdo it, then, then people who are not of the same faith, they might think, hey, uh, you mean once you become a Christian, you're no longer Chinese? Ah? Mm. So that's the, that's the um, um, saying that mm. I have been hearing um, for many, many years. Mm. So uh, even in my own family, because I, I'm a first gen as well, mm. uh, in my own family, I, I, I was the person who accepted Christ. And uh, for me, quite thankfully, both my parents are, were, well, they're not very, really, not very, um, they don't, they didn't, they don't have a lot of Chinese customs or, or anything like that. Well, that there, there's an idol in the house and all, and all that. But when, during Chinese New Year, when we go back to meet the bigger family, uh, that's where all these customs and mm-hmm. uh, traditions will kick right. in, you know, especially for Chinese New Year. And, uh, I, I, my dad came from a very big family of 16 siblings. Mm. And my dad happened to be the first son and the first child. And I happened to be the first, first child of the first. So, mm. um, generally there were a lot of expectations of what we are supposed to do. Mm. So when I became a Christian, uh, even though in Chinese culture, uh, more of the traditions or responsibility lies on the eldest son. Or I would eldest grandson. Uh, I'm a granddaughter or daughter, but but with that also there were still expectations because just mm. because of the the well the hierarchy or the ranking mm. <laughs> the payment you know in in yeah. Mandarin we say in 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 the family so mm. so yeah so classes like that uh, yeah. first gen is very very helpful because I was so glad mm. that uh, we moved out uh, many many years years ago that we should do this. Mm. Uh, it is very relevant because we talked about topics that Sarah talked about just now because yeah. Qingming or uh, Qingding is also uh, around the corner. So we want to prepare new believers how to uh, live and how to how to be still effective witnesses mm. uh, wherever they are in, in the midst of our precious loved ones. Amen. You know, uh, even as you have said a few things now, I think a lot of people out there, uh, if you're not from the Chinese culture, even worse, you, you, you probably don't understand about, you know, uh, first child, first grandchild, hierarchy, mm. Uh, customs and traditions uh, mm-hmm. that uh, you know are quite binding uh, as far as expectations are concerned and therefore quite stressful uh, for those who do not know what to do and when they do it uh, are, are, are they um, are they in trouble uh, don't do it also in trouble you know uh, so uh, what is our advice and uh, so uh, some of you who are watching if not all of you who are watching probably already know, uh, that uh, this is a special uh, feature today because uh, uh, it's Chinese New Year next week. And I thought it, it's, it's great. Uh, if I had a, a topic uh, for this uh, segment, uh, it, it, it'll be uh, how to be a good Chinese and a good Christian at the same time. Uh, and many, many, many years ago, uh, you know, uh, I think I wrote in a magazine, D2Y2, that... Uh, some people think that if you are a good Chinese, you can't be a good Christian. And if you are a good Christian, you cannot be a good Chinese. And mm. I believe that in God, uh, that's not true. Uh, and the truth is that you can be a good Chinese and a good Christian at the same time. Uh, and yeah. you can please God uh, and still be a wonderful, wonderful witness to your loved ones. Uh, so, yeah. so that's really uh, the heart of this uh, segment at the heart of this whole podcast today. Uh, so let me do the Chinese New Year later uh, because uh, I want to uh, segue after that and wish everybody Chinese New Year. Okay, happy Chinese New Year. So, so let's do the Chinese New Year uh, later, what, what we can expect. 
uh, you know, what we want to tell people about uh, getting ready for Chinese New Year and also maximizing uh, yeah. the reunions of Chinese New Year. So we'll do that uh, towards the uh, end. But let me go through as many topics as I can right now with you, okay? And let's try to do one of those like uh, two minutes, <laughs> I know it's not, three minutes per topic, okay? Just say what we need to know because there's so many, right? You do a yeah. whole class of, uh, of first generation. I only have now left probably only about 30, 35 minutes, okay? So let's go, let's go, okay? Uh, Sarah, what would, be, what would be the first uh, topic you would like to uh, uh, talk about? <laughs> Uh, first gen, I think, yeah, it's about, you know, like what Pastor said just now, you know, how, I, I think the question that I put out yesterday was, can I honor God while honoring parents? Good. I think okay. We can. Yeah. yeah. But we got to know who comes first. Right. You know. Oh, uh, that's good. So, so yeah, who comes first? Who comes first? Uh, we priority. Know God, priority. Yeah. Yeah. Who comes first? So, um, uh, in the Bible, it says that God, you know, God wants us to love Him with all of our heart, right. soul, mind, and strength. So he has to come first. And then we will see that he will open, you know, make a way for us. Mm. He will, uh, although sometimes, many times it comes with a lot of challenges. Of course. It's you tough, know, it's to, tough to do God that. First. Yeah. yeah. Because your family will never and understand then, that, right? Your unbelieving yep. family. In fact, don't say unbelieving family. Sometimes even believing family. It yeah. can even be a Christian dad, Christian mom. It's like, why you take this faith? I also Christian work. Why you take <laughs> it so seriously for? You know, yeah. you already you, you already get saved, already going to heaven, already, you know, uh, <laughs> come on lah, your family comes first, that kind of thing, right? So even Christian parents can give their Christian children a hard time, right? So yeah. you have answers for that too, right? Um, God first. God first. God first, no and, idols. And you said he will, he will, God will give you, when you put him first, when you prioritize God first, you're saying this now that God will give you the grace. God will give you the answers. Yes. God will give you the, the wisdom. faith, the wisdom. Uh, you know, even he will open the doors. He will sometimes even soften your parents' heart. And, and, yeah. and because a lot of us go by sometimes uh, the past, like, no lah, cannot lah, Elder Shirley, cannot one lah, Pastor Sarah. Sure, they kill me one. I tell you, the last time already, uh, they did this. The last time they said, uh, you do this, don't come home, you know. And then you said, oh no, right? You don't want to lose your family. And then we say, pray. If you book, put God first, if you honor God, he will honor you, right? Yeah. And, and, and then suddenly we hear of testimonies uh, that, the Lord changed the dad's heart, changed the mom's heart, and suddenly they're softer now. And uh, even though you had uh, the last historical memory to remember that your, your mom said, "Don't come back if you not, you know, if you're not going to be early or you're not going to uh, 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 put joystick on the altar." And then suddenly you say, "Oh no, I don't think I can do this." And then suddenly the Lord moves on your behalf, and then you go home expecting to be scolded, and then suddenly mom says, "Have you eaten?" <laughs> How are you? And you go like, what in the world? I thought, you know, I, I was already choosing my coffee already. And, 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 uh, <laughs> and, and God moves. And I'm sure you've been hearing yeah. many, many of these stories through the last 10 years, isn't it? Maybe I can share mine. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Sarah. So how, how God opened doors or, or, or turned around. So, so um, my family, a lot of them, uh, they are not Christians, uh, or even now so. So I, I mean, they used to joke, like a year so, like a year so, I'm like, your Sunday, you know, just one day, one Sunday, don't go to church. It's, it's okay, you know. Mm. He will understand, you know, that kind of thing. Or <laughs> your, will your, God, it. your God will understand if you don't go to church. Yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. know our God well. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like they know our God very well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they were like, you know, they were joking about it. Then there was one time I was like, oh, I, I, I don't feel good about you know, if 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 it is they laugh about Jesus, like yes, so like yes, so right. Yeah. Then I I don't say anything. I feel like, you know, it's not very. I I'm not honoring God, right? Mm. If I say something, I feel like self righteous. Mm. Uh, so then Holy Spirit gave me this 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 idea. So I I just gently and politely told one of the aunties and say that, hey, you know what? I I really really respect your God as well. So mm. could you not joke? Oh my God! I just laugh. You know, laugh and, and gently. And guess what? After that, um, uh, for many years, they, they offer food to either keep toys on, right? Mm -hmm. Then after that, you know, people will eat. Mm -hmm. and, and there was this one year, she just suddenly told me that, hey, you know what? This one, uh, we, we're going to buy pie. So this one, you don't take. Mm -hmm. I have actually kept aside another portion for you. Wow. So I was like, wow. 
So they they <laughs> they they, they, they they're shocked. saying they're saying so that they, they they offered food to idols, uh, but they know because they know your faith already. They purposely yeah. set aside food for you that yes. was not offered to the idols. Yes. So yeah. so so it gave you a sense of like wow, they not only understand but they accept it. Uh, yeah. And they respond to it now, and uh, it was your God who actually made it that way possible. Yeah. So good. Hey, yeah. uh, so cheap choy son. Okay, that that <laughs> if, if 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 somebody is watching from New Zealand or Australia <laughs> or the UK, they won't know what cheap choy son means. Uh, so uh, so so what's that? Welcome the God of fortune or God prosperity. of prosperity. prosperity. So yeah. so so what what did you do? They they offer uh what a food or what did yeah, you do? food. So they put out uh, a table. They put out a table. Uh, I, I've, I've fruit, seen my neighbor do it before. Don't he put it outside at the garden. Yeah. And and, oh. and 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 it has a has a has a table, uh, makeshift table. But then they put uh like okay, you said roast pork, Shirley, uh, mm. because uh, 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 the god of prosperity obviously likes roast pork. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, roast and, and 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 whatever else, right? Roast chicken, blah blah blah. And I think, I think there's I've some fruit, like fruit. And there's fruit, there's some there's some red candles. I think I don't know. Uh, and, yeah. and, 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 and so what they were what they're doing is just they they're trying to welcome the god of prosperity into their home. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a song also about that that goes with. Okay. So. Tyson Dao. Oh. Tyson Dao. Oh, that's a song. Tyson Dao. 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 Tyson
yeah. uh, you can't take an idol. You can't take yeah, an can't. idol and go and baptize yeah. it. Uh, like how uh, my friend in Kedah said, no, uh, some, every year he washes his idols. And uh-huh. one day, one day, one of the idol dropped into the bottom of the pail. And then the wife said, hey, I think your idol drowned. Uh, uh, but no, I mean, they were, they were just <laughs> joking with each other. Uh, but, but so you can't baptize an idol because an idol can't glorify no. God. Uh, right. No matter how you wash it and 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 and, and, and baptize it, it, it cannot yeah. glorify the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, who said to That's us right. that we should not worship idols. Oh, so okay, fine. Right. Uh, move on, uh, uh, Sarah. So sorry to uh, uh, stop you uh, earlier. No, is, is there? Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. Just just <laughs> just uh, uh, so 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 wonderful story, wonderful testimony, uh, Sarah. Thank you so much. Uh, that's why it's so good to hear from first generation Christians themselves. And Shirley said she's also a first generation Christian, but uh, she also mentioned that her parents were not so big on the customs. But when she went for Chinese New Year, the customs then suddenly appeared uh, and they all were pressured to perform. Uh, but we'll, we'll still keep to Chinese New Year a bit later. Uh, Sarah, uh, uh, do you have uh, something else? Otherwise, I'll go to Shirley. And, and all- I think Master, you can go. Okay, because 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 both of you can take yeah. turns, okay? Because there's at least ten topics, yeah. I think. Okay, let's go ahead. Shirley, <laughs> what's your, what's what's next on your mind? Uh, so so first, just now, just to continue from there. So, um, I I think the other word for that is um, redeeming like certain words and certain things that we do. So we have to be very clear. Certain things are outright no, you know, as a believer, God said so. You you can't. But certain things uh, are not, and I would like to challenge that because. Um, Many Chinese, they, they think, they, and, or even, especially when they do, are not in the faith, they would think that, oh, really, like, when you become a Christian, like, you have to strip all, every, every sense of your culture from you. You know, you are almost like you're no longer a Chinese and you have to be not filial because that's how they perceive when you don't call the joystick, you don't honor them. They think that that means you are not filial. But actually, we know that's not true because, um, so, so like for me, um, it was, uh, I'm, because we have like funerals and all that we have to go to it. So things like that and custom will come back out. So I remember, um, because I came from a very big family and uh, they were like, Hey, you, you go and, uh, you go and hold the joystick. Right? I know you go. I said, then I remember the first time I had to say that to my, to my aunties. Um, well, in, in our family, the, the, the aunties are very vocal. <laughs> <laughs> so, and are pushy sometimes. <laughs> I say, go, go. No, you're the first. Granddaughter, no, go, go. And uh, then, then, then I'm like, uh, then I have to say, no, I'm a Christian now. Mm. I, I, I don't believe in holding joystick. I can, I could still remember how shocked her face was because that was my oldest auntie and uh, she, she, she carries a lot of weight, her, mm. her words in the family, mm. yeah, besides my dad. And um, <laughs> I, I said that to her, she said, huh? What do you mean? Christian, you can still do. Mm. <laughs> I said, no, no, I, I'm saying I cannot, but I can do some other things, you know. I can uh, have to take water for you guys. <laughs> mm. I can uh, do this. So, but thinking the first ten, uh, the first ten is very important, but because that's one thing that we cover in the class as well. Mm. Uh, that we tell believers that uh, when you know that that you're not supposed to do something, uh, so that you will continue to honor God, mm. um, you need to be bold and courageous to make the stand. Yeah. Not to say make the stand rudely, but it just it can be very polite. I think Sarah, you mentioned the word just now. So, mm. no, you don't have to be rude. You, know, you can be very gently, very politely, and yet firm, very firmly tell the people mm. about your stand. Uh, because And because we respect each other, right? Mm. So, if this is my religion or this is my faith, as I respect yours, mm. I hope you can respect mine yeah. too. You know, it's, it's really basic human respect yeah. that we're talking the, the about. The first stand... Uh, Shirley, uh, Sarah, I'm sure you uh, can agree is always the hardest. Yes. Uh, yes. There's a fear and, of rejection. And, or... Yeah. And even uh, fear of being harmed. Five four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, depending, yeah. depending on how young you are, right? Uh, yeah. If you were 12, 15, yeah, you know, a slap could come across your face. Uh, and, but but that, that's where the uh, persecution uh, and, and sufferings for the Lord uh, is yeah. taught in the Bible to be ready for that yeah. Uh, yeah. because the first stand is the hardest and yet it is the most important because yeah. uh, even in walking, uh, the first step, right? Mm. And if the child never took the first step, they will never walk. Mm. Uh, and if we Christians uh, are not ready to take the first step, 
uh, we might not be able to walk the way God wants us to. And the Bible says that when we walk, we walk by faith and not by sight. So the first step mm. is hard because we actually do come into a decision because of all the past things we've heard and seen, all the past uh, threats given by mom or dad or uncle or auntie. Mm. Uh, so it is sight because we are looking at that threat. We are looking at what happened the last time. We are looking at how they uh, stopped our allowance or how they uh, rejected us from that dinner or didn't invite us to that party. You know, it, it, there's a cost. Uh, and the fear that they will do it again and even worse. Uh, so that makes the first step always the hardest because you, are, mm. you, ac you actually are going by sight. But if we went by faith, we will say, okay, even though I had that sight and I feel this way of what happened in the past and it might be worse this time around, but the Lord told me to walk by faith. And so yeah. the, that, that walk has to start with the first step by faith. Yeah. And then the second step becomes easier and third and right. fourth. And one yeah. day you find yourself running by faith, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, and going further and faster for the Lord. But it all starts in that first step. So I agree with both of you. Yeah. 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 So maybe I can tell a story. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> about making, yeah. So so just I shared about you know Chinese New Year. So so of course funeral is also not easy. Yep. Yeah. So I remember during my grandma's funeral, uh, it was also I was also a young Christian, uh, but I thank God X Church actually quit me. Uh, so I I went and and I knew that in my family there's one, uh, that's older than me that that that's already a Christian. So I thought okay, I think should be okay. Mm. Should be okay. <laughs> But it didn't happen the way that I was expecting it uh, because uh, that family member participated. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh no, how? So of course, then I was like, okay, like what Shirley say, la, I just serve la, like ex church, you know, we just serve. I become mm -hmm. the, uh, I serve water, I serve, I help with, you know, the pakam, you know, the mm -hmm. uh, recording of the, the, the love gift, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from family members, I did everything. But of course, uh, it, it was very noticeable. I mean, in, in a funeral, uh, what you wear, what color you wear, mm -hmm. right? That represents either you are a child or you are in-law, daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. or you are a grandchild. So, of course, uh, then again, family members who saw it, like, hey, who is this? Why is she not sitting down mm -hmm. during the prayer? Mm -hmm. So, I was like, oopsie. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so, of course, my, my dad was uh, quite angry mm -hmm. <laughs> that night when we went back to the hotel because uh, this is not in, in KL uh, it's somewhere else so so then he was like why can't you respect your grandma mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. why can't you respect so I think so that's one of the things that yeah. you know we always face like why can't you because in Chinese culture filial piety is, is mm -hmm. the utmost yeah. you know uh, um, uh, utmost important you know uh, value that mm -hmm. you know it's part of Confucianism that, that the Chinese community actually believes in so it, it involves obeying you know no matter what is the parents or the elderly wishes so i i was i was very sad mm. yeah but the other the next day i i i decided to okay i'll sit in but somehow the monk did not give me the job mm. somehow mm. yeah i didn't say anything <laughs> but just somehow didn't give me so I was like okay I, I just sat down and of course uh, during uh, the, the the whole prayer session I, I was looking at you know you know they normally have like this cloth mm -hmm. with all the pictures and all I had was I thank God I asked Jesus because mm -hmm. it's really a lot of torture in the hell mm -hmm. <laughs> because all the picture mm -hmm. is about like, what kind of torture mm -hmm. depending on what kind of sin and I was like thank you Jesus that when I believe in you uh, you took away my sin and yeah. I can go to heaven for sure. Yeah. So, and because of the stand that I made, my cousin started asking me mm. about, you know, hey, actually, why do you do this? So I, I started sharing and witnessing. And to this them. is your Christian oh. cousin? No, they are not. Mm. They, are, they, they were not. Mm. But a few years down the road, they came to my brother's wedding and told me that, hey, you know what? I am already a Christian mm. and I'm already baptized. Amen. And his sister recently got saved as well. And the whole family got saved. Wonderful. Uh, uh, Wonderful. Yeah, so that, that was just really amazing. Yeah. But however, after that, there was also quite, quite an interesting story after that. On the third day, normally they would burn 
like the houses and the cars and the maids that you know you prepare. And the paper houses. Yeah, the paper houses. <laughs> yeah, not the real houses. Yeah. Paper, the money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For those of you who are not familiar, burn the houses. They make paper, made mm. servants. Yeah. You know, and cars and nowadays. Just for the understanding of our listeners, uh, so this is this is also Chinese sort of uh, practice. Uh, not not everybody does it, but uh, they they are afraid that in hell, <laughs> right? Uh, that uh, their 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 loved ones won't won't have a house to stay, uh, won't have car to drive, uh, won't have servants to treat uh, and serve them. So they they symbolically uh, burn paper houses. Uh, paper cars, uh, paper uh, servants, paper money also. They burn as much as they can so that uh, their family member, wherever they've gone to, will have a lot of money. Uh, right? So it's a very smoky uh, occasion. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, so just for the understanding of the listeners. Uh, and a lot of money is being made from this. You know, this is a good business. Uh, yeah? Uh, that uh, people people who make this paper stuff uh, sell them for for a, a handsome price, uh, and uh, the Chinese would buy it because yeah you know uh, it's like yeah. a sacrifice, uh, and uh, the more the merrier lah right the more yeah. houses so, the more cars the more money. So we were, yeah we were doing all that and of course yeah it's quite a few thousand. Mm. So so and then the monks stuck a notice on the wall saying that. Mm, after the prayer session, my grandma was still on the way down. Mm. Huh? Yeah, mm. after the prayer session. Mm. Still then, on the way down. Yeah, correct. So my dad, looking at it, then I look at my dad. Then, of course, they also offered to do more sessions mm. uh, for double the price. Mm. And yeah, they said still got chance. Still, still got, got chance. chance. Still yeah. got chance so, to pray up the soul. Yeah, correct. Mm. Trade the soul that, into a better that place. Caused, that caused us to think, mm. uh, or at, at least for me, mm. caused me to think like, is that real? Mm. Is that real? Mm. Uh, you, you, you pay another sum, will it really? And I really thank God that, mm. you know, at that time I said, thank God I have Jesus. Amen. You know, mm. that I, I, when I believe yeah. that he died on the cross for my sins and he has forgiven me, uh, I know that, you know, one day I'll see him. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, Sarah, so you mentioned about the monks, you know, even though you thought, okay, lah, you know, I'll show some uh, respect uh, according to how my father sees respect and I'll, I'll probably s- sit down. And uh, So you actually were sort of willing to compromise a little bit, you know, for the sake of family, unity and peace. But God still came through for you because God knew your heart. And God knew that you yeah. you had made a stand, but uh, that you were under pressure and you were alone, and you know no one else to support you and protect you. Not even the family member who was Christian. You said uh, you know because that person was uh, also going through all the process, uh, but you wanted to make a stand. You did make a stand the first day, and the second day you were pressured, uh, and then you said the monks didn't give you the joystick, uh, so you actually no. couldn't proceed with the. Pai Pai or the Pray Pray or you know the the, the jaw stick ritual, uh, and I've heard I don't know whether it's like, I've heard yeah. this kind of testimony many many times that actually monks because they are also spiritually connected know who they is a Christian. Yep. They know who is a Christian. They know who has been filled with the Holy Spirit, who has been saved by Jesus, and has the blood of Christ over them. They know. In fact, uh, another story I heard was that three monks went to a certain place and they were already uh, ready to do warfare uh, to get the Christians out of this area. And when the three monks, uh, you know, started to chant and uh, uh, tried to, you know, probably curse the Christians out of that place, uh, by the time they reached the uh, front uh, door of the church, uh, they saw something that caused all three of them to run for their lives. And nobody did anything to touch them, to speak to them, nothing. Uh, they just saw, and I think they either saw Jesus or they saw his angels. Uh, and so it's not the first time I'm hearing this. I probably can remember yeah. about a dozen or two dozen times where they know. 
And, and yeah. that's good also because they are spiritually connected. Uh, just with, with, with which spirit they are connected, that's the only mm. thing. And so the Holy Spirit, of course, is greater than any spirit. Uh, and Amen. so, uh, yeah, uh, God uh, is, uh, you know, always giving us this confirmation of His power and His presence uh, every time we, we, uh, we go through experiences like this. Amen? All right. So we are going to be uh, splitting uh, this lengthy but really good episode uh, into two. This is episode 13 and we expect that you will tune in again uh, for ex episode 14 because it's just been a really fruitful uh, discussion. So may the Lord bless you. Uh, I trust that you have been uh, blessed uh, and uh, that uh, you will come back again uh, nearer to Chinese New Year in the next episode. See you then. God bless. Bye.